Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and whatever the hell else it is for some of you people out there. I am your host, Mike Usnick. This is my co-host, Tony, if you don't know already or if you're living under a rock. And if you enjoy the shows that you've seen, hit the fucking subscribe button. Do it now. Do it. Do it. Hit it. Hit it. Smash it. Punch it. Destroy it. Well, don't destroy your computer. But how you doing, Tony? No, pretty good. How about you, man? I'm doing good. We actually finally have a sack on the show, and it's not mine. Ah, or mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wondering what's going on with this guy's sack that everybody calls him the sack. But I guess... Oh, we'll definitely get into that. <laughs> we'll get into his sack. But <laughs> we uh, got lovely people in the chat. We've got Kanak. we got Debbie. We've got Alex. We've got so many people. We've got Funky. Um, Funky's never taken off the Psalms of Silence shirt, so it's starting to get stinky. I don't know if it smells as bad as when you guys wear it. But... Hey, man, we're endorsed by Dirt Bag, so like they said, wear it till it stinks. <laughs> wear it till it fucking stinks. We'd like to give a shout out to our loyal uh, Patreons. Uh, we've got Garak, we've got Hot Amy, we've got Gloria, we've got David Dowdle, and if you want to become a Patreon today, just visit our website uh, www.patreon.com slash official mike usnick like i said if you enjoy the show you're watching hit the subscribe button we also got the tiers we've got tier one where you could um get a big shout out on the show and then um that's only for a dollar we are also going to be adding stickers soon for the five dollar patreons the five dollar patreons you get to pick the um topics of the show and then you'll get a sticker you'll get a fucking sticker tony if yeah, uh, they, if good. they didn't if they didn't come up missing at somebody's house, but uh, <laughs> get a sticker, and then and then for ten dollars you get a one on one chat with me and Tony, and you also get the same benefits as every other one. Um, today we have a very special sacky guest. He has a very nice sack, I think. That's what I've been told. Um, uh, Mike Fasano. Oh no, wait, fuck, that's the wrong Mike Fasano. Shit. Um. This one. There we go. There's the sack. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love your obsession with this. We could talk an hour about it, or we could talk about, we could talk uh, uh, two minutes. What do you want to do? It's up to you. Hi. Uh, Sorry I'm late. This is Mike. You know what? That, fu- you know, that, fu- that Mike Fasano, I think he had my, uh, I think he had my, uh, my uh, Wikipedia page take- taken down because there's, Mike Fasano, me, and there's Mike Fasano, him, the Florida politician. And I had a Wikipedia page that was up for like 15 years, and it's gone. In January, it was gone. Oh, or shit. February. Or maybe, maybe it was after COVID. Uh, hit. I, was, I was looking at So you got your Wikipedia page taken down by somebody you can't count votes. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like what? What the hell? I was looking you up, and that's why I asked for your bio. I'm like, all I'm getting is a Florida politician. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I had a really cool. I had a, it was really cool. Somebody, you know, I think I was working. First of all, hello everybody. Hello, we don't know each other. This one right this there, is Tony. Tony, I've seen Tony. Tony, are you are you uh, doing your Harley Davidson internship? Uh, are you moving? Did you quit uh, the band yet? What's happening? Oh, I can interview I, you. I, I'm, mo- I'm, I'm moving out to me and Mike are moving out to Phoenix in uh middle of February so I can start my school in March. 
All right. Cool. Yeah. I'll be out. We'll be out there for a year. Arizona style. Man. Yeah. 120 cool. degree fucking weather. Where, where are you at right now? I'm in Burbank and today's a really nice overcast day. And I, and I, uh, I think we're finally getting our fall now. Where, where are you? Where, so where are you guys? Ohio. Yep. Ohio. Yeah, where not the weather not Cleveland, Cleveland, right? Not the mistake. No, the lake, Cleveland. No, 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 no. You like that? No, we're we're next to Sheep Fucker Wheeling, West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? I don't know, but I heard that if you get a sheep on a le- on a, a cliff, they push back more. That's what that's what I that's what I've heard. That's crazy. Welcome that's to crazy. Pink Sock. Uh, Welcome to Pink Sock. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad we got to do this. Um, right? Pink sock or time. pink sack today? Pink sack, whatever. Let's. <laughs> I love it. What a wonderful tribute you guys did. <laughs> right, thanks. Um, well, uh, anyways, uh, no, it's it's nice out here today. I mean, it's nice and overcast. I think fall is finally coming. We we had like crazy heat, and then we had these crazy fires on in California, and it was just, like smoky and bad air quality. It's like. Ashes is it getting air. any better out there for you guys? Yeah, it's getting better. Uh, it's it's finally you know they're they're minimalizing everything and and uh, the fires and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. We're we're good. We're uh, we're in a good place now. Um, and it looks like fall is here. It's like the first overcast I've seen in a while. So, is it true how- that a fire was started due to a gender reveal party? Yep, <laughs> exactly. Did we, did we ever wow. find out the gender? <laughs> uh, um. Flame red and orange. So Satan, I don't know, and they're they're trying to hide people too, and not say who they are because yeah. because uh, you know it's really rad. My dad is calling me. He never called me. Um, it was his birthday. I, I said, "You want to hear crazy? I should put him on the line." But um, say hi to Daddy Fasano. Fuck no. Anyways, um, <laughs> um. But uh, no, they're, they're, they're you can't. They, they don't want people to know. I'm sure somebody knows who these people are, but mm-hmm. they're trying to protect their them because people want to, you know, harm them because it's done so much damage. But I, I mean, can understand, man. I mean, you guys are younger than me, but back in the day when somebody had a baby, here, here's the thing: there was an old wives' tale of um, if you ate, if you're pregnant, you, you know, uh, and you ate asparagus and you peed and your 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 pee smelled it was a boy and if it didn't smell it was a girl well uh-uh. <laughs> he's talking about his pee and then he disappears <laughs> let's try to remove him and bring him back hey mike you froze buddy <laughs> froze hey, hardcore didn't it Hey, Kath, could you get a hold of him and tell him just refresh? I want to know about that. Me, that me, that me too movement got a hold of that shit. Was like, we're not having this pee talk. <laughs> <laughs> he likes being pissed on or something. <laughs> uh, he's not Trump. <laughs> Fuck! You always got to make it political. You fucking said it, so. <laughs> Hey, hey, Kath, this is unscripted. So, hey, are you getting a hold hey. of him? Are you yeah, getting a hold I'm of just him? messaging him now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying. It went to a really hard <laughs> buffer, and yeah. then that's it. All right. Yeah. We'll get a hold of that. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. Thanks, Kath. <laughs> so, I, I love how he's like, if your piss starts stinking, and then you just buffer. <laughs> Only on pink sock does this shit happen. Yeah, we're talking about urophilia, I think, isn't it? Is yeah. that what you call it? Uh. Yeah. How does that work, though? Your piss starts stinking. And then <laughs> it's a girl. Or did he say a boy? I mean, mine constantly looks like a cold, frosty beer, but I'm not going to drink the shit either. Mine glows in the dark. You might want <laughs> to get that checked. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my piss You've been fucking taking a piss next to fucking... Uh, Chernobyl anytime lately. I, I wonder if he answered that call from his dad, and that's why he froze. <laughs> He'll be back. Guys, this is live. This shit happens. It's all right. It's all good. 
but yeah, I can't wait to hear his uh, Janie Lane stories and shit. Cause oh, he, did, he did play for Warrant. I just want to pick his brain about playing with Don Felder, man. Oh, I know. You're a big Eagles fan. I fucking love the Eagles. <laughs> What's your favorite Eagles song? Hotel California. Not even a joke. That's weird for an Eagles fan because I normally hear people say like, oh, fuck that song. That song is a masterpiece. <laughs> because like, it's like for me, like with Alice Cooper schools out, like I like it. I respect it for what it is. But it's either, I, it's either that or I even like the song My Old 55. It's a good song. That's like, a good it's, one. It's one of them things where like for some fans of bands, like if a song's overplayed, they don't like it. You yeah, I mean? my my mom's favorite Eagles song is uh, "Desperado," which is like a piano type deal, but Desperado. <laughs> yeah, that was actually. Um, did you ever watch like '90s wrestling? That was Terry Funk's theme song. Are you serious? Yeah, I did okay. not know that. You start talk. You start talking about P, and then you go. You disappear. I like that. How's it going? It's going not bad. That it's was weird. Long. It happens. It's all good. You know what? It's I'm a fucking throw. I'm so not a violent person, but now I'm getting hot and mad. Like I, you know what? You it's like the fucking computer works when it works, when oh. you don't need it to work, and then when you actually really need to do something, it's a fucking nightmare. Anyways, yeah. so technology, so you pee, right? If you, let's go back to let's just reverse back to where we were at. So okay. all right, no, my angles are weird here, but um, so. You pee if you're if you're lady if you pee and you smell it. Asparagus is supposed to, in the in the Italian wives' tale of pregnancy, a male's pee is supposed to smell when you eat asparagus. So if you pee and you smell the asparagus, then uh, oh, it's a boy, and if not, it's a girl, right? Um, and back in the day, we used to wait. Oh, was it? What's it going to be? A boy or a girl? But everybody's got a fucking make their baby in a fucking test tube and and in fetal fertilization and then they, they have triplets or, or 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 quadruplets and all this crazy shit or twins or whatever and uh what happened to the surprise of of oh shit i got pregnant oh shit we're having a baby what's it gonna be oh it, look at it it's a girl anyways you kids are too young for, for that or even, or even when you went to the gynecologist and they did the ultrasound and they were like oh it has a wiener or it doesn't have a wiener <laughs> Right. You don't need exactly. fireworks. Does the pee thing work? <laughs> you What's never that? said you never said if the piss thing works or not. Is that real? Well 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 that was the Italian wives' tale that I heard as a kid growing up. Oh she, you know, they didn't smell it, so it's gonna be boring. I don't know if it does or not. Maybe. <laughs> Is that like the groundhog? Maybe. But it's always a scatter? surprise. But it's always a surprise. That's the whole thing. Everybody's gotta fucking know now. They gotta so, know it's oh we're gonna have a boy, we're gonna have two boys, we're gonna have twins, we're gonna have triplets. Jesus. It's like and, then, and then they schedule and then they schedule their birth because it's a C section now. Oh, we're gonna have it on Thursday morning at nine o'clock. You know I, mean? I didn't think <laughs> having you on here we'd have a rant about birth. I'm sorry. I'm you know today I'm having a bad day. I, today I, usually I my my sailing is smooth. You know, I, I find wide berths and I just smooth it. Today, it's been tough getting on here. <laughs> it's oh, good, good, bro. You're on the right oh. show for this shit. <laughs> how, how about how about how about how the ones that require to have a digital pregnancy test? Well, it's like a digital- never in my never in my life have I ever looked at a pregnancy test and gone, "Oh shit, I can't figure it out." Oh right, it's right, analog. Right, right. How many have you done? Oh, uh, three now so far. Really? How many kids do you yeah. have? I got three kids. I don't miss. <laughs> the twins. But you guys <laughs> did it old school, right? You guys just oh uh, yeah, you know, no gender reveal God, party. Got together and uh, had a kid. Yeah. yeah, he made he he wanted to see how bad his wife's piss smelled. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Come in here, honey. Eat some you- of- Trying to give you guys a better angle. Jesus. It's like... Anyways. <laughs> but hey, you get... so anyways, here we are. What's going on here. with this uh, Gretsch thing you're talking about? Oh, the Gretsch interview thing that I did? Yeah. How'd that go? You know, um, it, it went good, actually. Uh, it, it was an after uh, afternoon drum break, and there's a, um, 
a guy who's a Gretsch artist. He, like a lot of people, started a podcast because of COVID-19, as you guys did, right? Mm -hmm. Or was this right. happening before COVID? Um, we had plans before COVID. It actually evolved into something that it wasn't originally going to be. It was just going to be me and him bullshitting in his basement. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bullshit in the basement. What a great that'll be that'll be the offshoot show. Once you guys hit a certain demographic here, bullshitting in the basement. That's the next show. Yeah. Yeah. So well we had we had a, we, had a, we had a third guy, Dave, and he's my guitar player in the band. And we were just just gonna call it like three sweaty dudes in a basement. But, <laughs> but we three dudes, one basement. I love it. Hey, yeah. really quick. I, <laughs> I saw I sorry, I since this is so off the top, I saw comment from kinga anna um and i do love kinga anna's stage name i call these screen named stage names you know like ryan roxy's name isn't really ryan roxy but ryan roxy is his his stage name and i love it mm -hmm. um so i love these stage names i'm, I'm obsessed with a uh, like a uh, kath spooky peg i'm obsessed <laughs> do you know what i mean i was yeah, just right? just had to be mike pisano because i'm there's nothing special you know or or, or glittery about me but um you, or spooky Tony, about me. Then you have Tony What's Two Toes. That? Tony oh, Two Toes. Tony Two Toes. Oh, Tony, is that, was yeah. that your stage name? <laughs> yeah. it. Well, it, it's my nickname in the band. <laughs> I love or the it. guitar player ends up calling me Dago Red, but that's he, I don't know where he got that from. If, if you ever watched that episode of the show, he actually, yeah, he lost his toes in an unfortunate mo uh, mowing accident. I, d I don't recommend trimming your toenails with a lawnmower. No, it doesn't work that well. So so basically, you can't really do any topologies like our friend Corey from Second Show, where he does he, sign, he can sign with his toes. Yeah, my foot modeling days are over, brother. <laughs> wow. He, he, can actually, he actually paints his toenails because it's less to paint. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so that's crazy. That must have been like, did they try to save them? Uh, they waited three days to reattach them. I don't know why. Uh, then they reattached them, waited about a week and a half, went back to the doctor. They were totally black and dead. They had to uh, go in uh, for a second surgery and take them off and stuffed my foot full of gauze. And I had to sit there for like another week. And then they ripped all that out and sent me home. Wow. That's a new kind of hurt. <laughs> that's a new kind of yeah. You you want to talk about hurt? Wait until you get gauze stuck to a bone. That's fuck. That's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and there's a lot of nerve endings in your fingers and toes and stuff that you don't oh, really yeah. realize until there's a splinter, a little teeny splinter, or your fucking toes chopped off. I can say toe chopped off, no, right? Yeah. It like that lawnmower blade went halfway up the middle of my foot. Oh man! Wow. All the way Thank through God. twice. Wow. Wow. Well, could, um, could you imagine it drumming like that if you were a drummer, Tony? You know, you want to know what the fucked up part was? I That same day, I was supposed to go buy a brand new wall pedal. Oh, man. I text my buddy and I'm like, Wally, you know that chip to go buy that wall pedal? Not going to happen now. Hang, <laughs> hang on a sec. <laughs> really quick. So did you eventually, when you, when you, when you sort of recovered and healed, I know there's, I'm a drummer now, but I've, I've been around and I've seen a few wah, wah pedals in my career. Um, did you get the morally one that is shaped like a foot or did you get the, uh, just the regular uh, boss one? Cause the, there's a morally yeah. one that, that has like toes on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just ended up getting a, a Zach wild cry baby. If you yeah. got the one with toes on it, you'd have to take like really sharp scissors or a knife and cut off the toes you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. I love it. Well, speaking of nicknames, nicknames are given to you. Like you said, I don't know why, why they gave me that name. Um, it's the same thing with me, the sack. It just, it happened. I know happen? you want to talk about this. I'll tell you how it happened. <laughs> I'm, I, I, went to, I, went, I went to a Catholic high school, literally just down the street from where I live now in Burbank. And um, I played sports. And uh, I wasn't great. I was always like a second, third, fourth, fifth string. But eventually I got to the varsity team with a couple of the guys that had played on the varsity team for, for years in my class. And one, one of them, one, one guy's name is Fernando Ghana. Fernando was a chick magnet, probably still is. I haven't seen him. And um, Fernando, uh, 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 
you know, I was the guy who who hung out with uh, hung out with uh, the jocks. I hung out with the the musicians. I hung out with the nerds. I hung out with everybody. And so I'm playing basketball. We would we would uh, re uh, rehearse. We would practice in the morning before school, and then you have to take a shower. And I remember being in the shower um, with the guys. Obviously, it's a it's a group shower. And Fernando turned to me, and he said, "Holy fuck, Fasano, look at your sack!" <laughs> and um and 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 I kind of I looked down, and this was the this was the era of. Uh, we used to wear swatch watches and I don't, I think they've come back, but these little watches. Mm -hmm. So I took this, the, you know, my sack and I draped it up over by my swatch watch. And I said, what, <laughs> this thing, this thing right here, this thing, <laughs> and I, and I, and sh you know what I mean? This thing. And uh, so that's kind of where the name came from. And that was a joke. And then it evolved from uh, the swatch watch. So later on, it was, uh, I remember I was working with this band on this record, Rancid. Uh, up in the Bay Area, and uh, they had got wind of the nickname, and they wanted to see it. So I whipped it out, and I covered a uh, a Snapple bottle. Now, whenever I whipped it out, there was always a procedure of tucking my penis. I won't say I'll say penis up into my my waistline, and then turning around and pulling the the, the bag out. And, uh, and then grabbing the bottle and then covering the bag and then having the bottle, showing the bottle and then flopping the sack over the bottle. And that was the show. And it was a Snapple bottle. And then it became a, a Coke can because a Coke can is national. It's always the same size. It's a reference. And when I was touring with Warrant, um, as a, you know, as a hired gun and, and uh, to make a little extra money, we do a little sack showing. And it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, three head minimum 25 bucks a head three, three head minimum no cameras no whatever in the back lounge of the bus and i you know sometimes i'd make a two two or three hundred dollars a night because the guys in the band the 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 original guys um would be like goofing, hey man show my buddy fucking alan from texas your sack and blah blah I go, well, get a few more guys get the money together let's do it you know what i mean so we go on the back and we do it so it was kind of a funny thing and it's all folklore now i'm married and and you know i'm a different uh different uh guy it's different times now too you probably can't even do that anymore but it was all in fun it was a good time and it was just whatever but but anyways but i always wanted a cool nickname i wanted a um i wanted a cool nickname like junior i thought junior was a cool nickname even though i have nothing to be a junior of or or uh or um little big man or something like that, you know, but it's sack. So it just kind of stuck. And, uh, and, uh, sack stuck. <laughs> you, yeah, you can't, you can't, you, you know, it's, it's like, you can't, it's like I said, you, you don't pick your nicknames and whatever, but you know, it's really funny in tiger army. It's, it's really cool. And I've known Nick 13, our singer for a long time. And he never, he never calls me sack. None of the guys in that camp call me sack, but I do run into people on the road. And it's actually the sack if you want to be like the cult. It's the sack. <laughs> but um, um, if you want to be big. if you, if you want to be English and proper, that sweet peg, the sack or the sack. But um, but yeah, no, it's just kind of stuck. And it's what's weird is some of these records say Mike Sack Fasano on them. So it's 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 <laughs> it's just it's just a thing, you know. And it's just really weird. But um, that story yeah, but, was but better than I thought started, it would be. What's that? <laughs> That story was better than I thought it'd be. No, oh, yeah. You know, it's just it's it's you know it's it like I said it's 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 sort of where, um, it, it's like I said you just get a nickname you know it's like we just got a you know like a new cat and she's calling it meow meow it's a feral cat and it's like it's it's um it's I'm not calling it meow I'm just calling it new cat and I think it'll be even if we get more cats it'll always still be the new cat. You know, that's right. its name now. I think you just give it, you just get a name or, and give a name. And also nicknames are a term of endearment. If you give somebody a nickname, it's because you like them. You know what I mean? Um, something, they stir something up. So obviously going back to the shower, going back to being um, in 12th grade in high school, uh, hanging with the fucking cool guys like Fernando and my friend Jeff Bulgenic, the, the basketball stars, the sport athlete stars. I became cool to them because of my sack. Maybe they were afraid. <laughs> too but uh um i always but it was always a funny the, thing i always heard the sack and i'm like is he all sack like does it just have this oh <laughs> no, i mean i mean i'm italian the you know i have a decent size you know thing 
So. Surprised you did. I'm surprised the story didn't evolve into like you playing the game from the movie Waiting, like showing someone the bat wing in the back room. <laughs> He's done that probably. You saw that. You saw that face. <laughs> you know what's funny? Do you re- You know what's really weird is I, uh, I'll tell you one funny story about it. Because a lot of the situations were always the same. Back lines of the bus or in the studio or something like that. A couple of people. It's funny. It's a good laugh and it's whatever. But I remember Warren back in, I want to say maybe like 2002, we went to Vegas to play the Porno Awards, the AVN Adult Video uh, Network Awards or whatever. It's the Porno Awards at like Caesar Palace. And yeah. um, we played a, a few songs, you know, at the end. And, and like Ron Jeremy was there and, you know, Peter North and and like all of these porn stars and it, like, the like guy, the guy that's the plumber and the uh, policeman and every fucking porno. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were all there getting worth. So I don't know what happened, but we were backstage and it was after this whole thing was done. And I don't, I wish I remember who this porn star chick was with her porn star boyfriend. Um, but we were back, we were back there and she's like, I heard, I heard about your sack and I've got to see it. And I was just like, you know, I was probably a little fucked up. You know, I mean, I probably had a few cocktails and whatever. And I was like, all right. And there was like, maybe it's like 20 people back then. There was no, there was no money exchange or anything like that. And um, I put my balls on her forehead and covered <laughs> like her face. I mean, I figured, I figured, uh, yeah, that was crazy time. So anyways, you heard it here first on the Pink Sack podcast <laughs> featuring... <laughs> Mike, Mike, and Tony. Yeah. So anyway, so it was just, but you know, but she looked I, like Phantom was, of the Opera. She looked like uh, yeah, Phantom I, of the. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> you know what's funny? You know what's funny is, um, it was like, I think for them being porn stars, I think, that, you know, and they've done everything, whatever being porn stars, but to do something like that, to them, I think they all got a kick out of it. It was a good time. You've played with Warren, you've played with all these people, but you really made it when you laid your sack on a porn star's face. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> those were the good of- old days. Those those days are gone, and I feel sorry for the kids that are younger than you who will never. Um, is that Gloria yeah. DeSantos from uh, from Stefan Show? Hi, Gloria. Uh, dude, oh, really yeah. quick, I want to apologize. Hey. I did I did Ryan Roxy's podcast a while ago, and I. There was a lot of comments that I missed, and, and I'm watching this on my thing, so I'm only seeing the comments that pop up. So I'm sorry mm-hmm. if I didn't answer anybody's questions, and I'm sorry I'm not ignoring anybody. I'm going to try to say hi to everybody from that. We have a few questions <clears throat> towards the later on oh. in the show from people that sent them. So we got that too. Fantastic. But okay, great. But me, me and Tony wanted to know because you played with Warrant. Um, mm-hmm. My question about Warrant is: is do you have any crazy Janie Lane stories? Definitely tons. Um, Janie, Janie Lane, first of all, is one of the most talented people I I'd, I'd work one uh, ever worked with. Uh, one of the best frontmen. If you don't have a good frontman in your band, forget it. I mean, especially for that stuff. He he had he had soul charisma, uh, style as kooky as it was for the eighties. Um, he had a whole thing, and I remember, um, I remember, you know, it's like he struggled with booze and 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 um i remember on two occasions he was like be up all night the bus would pull into town somewhere he's like come on man i want to get my eyebrow pierced come with me and i was like all right let's go so it's like nine in the morning it's like no place is open we're trying to find a place finally he's been up all night i just got up we're in this town and you get his eyebrow pierced because he's all fucked up right and then, uh, like two days later, he, he'd yank it out because he was fucked up again. Why did I do this? Yank it out. And then we do that again. But, um, but, um, as far as, as far as crazy, uh, I mean, that's not crazy that, but that's crazy. But I just remember like, um, Jane, here's the greatest, probably one of the, not crazy, but one of the greatest stories I remember, you know, Janie would drink, you know, and, um, and I think he drank just because if you're an alcoholic, I'm not saying he's an alcoholic, sometimes you need to have the booze just to sort of feel normal. And mm-hmm. so I remember we were on tour and uh, we did, we, we did it. First of all, I met Janie sober. That's what's crazy. So I knew who the person was. And then when he drink, 
um, it would be just like you'd steer clear. You know, I'd like duck into my bunk and kind of lay low. And we had a guy named Waldo who was like our our our, our uh, tech guy and his assistant. And and uh, and uh, he'd always be hanging with Waldo all night. But um, when I duck out, and then, then again, that's where these early morning let's get my eyebrow pierced thing. I never judged Jane, Janie when he started drinking. I never tried to get him sober because you can't make somebody sober if they yeah. don't want to be sober. Um, and I did my share of party and I, you know, I did the blow and I did the booze and all that stuff. But for me, because I was just a hired gun in the band, I had to always, uh, I always had to, I, there was no babysitter for me. There was no Waldo for me. There was no manager for me. So I always had to do my thing. And then, and then if we had a night off, if we, it was the last show of like five shows in a row, and I know we were going to have a day off, then I'd fucking whip it up and, and, and go nuts and get crazy and party all night. But, um, but uh Janie um Janie was uh super super talented super super whatever but super un unfortunately um addicted to to you know the booze I guess but what, mm -hmm. but what's really funny is um I remember um we did a tour and uh he was he was sober we did a tour he started drinking again um we did a tour and the cocaine was a thing. Now I remember um, I used to do a blow. And we'd go back to the back lounge, and 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 um, he'd he'd he's, it's, we're like, hey, do you want? Some? Well, I didn't say it. it wasn't me saying, hey, do you want some blow? But do you want some blow? And uh, and uh, he's like, he goes, he goes, no, I don't want to do any, but can I just smell it? <laughs> which I th which I thought was funny, but but then on that tour, it was he became the guy. He'd do a little blow, and then he'd be like Dr. Phil. I remember Dr. Phil's show just came out. This is how long ago. This is 2001 or two or whatever. <laughs> and we put a back lounge, uh, a, a, a thing on the back lounge, and it was, um, and we wrote Dr. Phil, you know, lounge. And he'd hold court in there. And then he mm -hmm. was fucking normal. If he did a little blow or a lot of blow or whatever, he became normal. But the booze sort of kind of made him like kind of a monster in a way. You know what I mean? Um, right. after a point, you know, of, of whatever, but, um, but I thought it was funny, like sober to drinking to, oh, I don't want to do, didn't do any blow and then did a little blow and then never did blow again that I knew of ever, you know what I mean? So it was just mm -hmm. funny. It's just a funny kind of, kind of, kind of thing. Funny, but funny, but, but tragic, sad, but, but a true, a true. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And the other thing too, is like, I, I always try to mention this. Janie was a fucking amazing drummer. And and he had such an amazing pocket. And that's the groove in the back. So it was always great. And we did a tour when he was out of Warrant. We were doing Janie Lane's Warrant or Janie Lane and the Underdogs, um, which we were all underdogs from other bands or whatever. We had Phil Susan, who was an amazing bass player, and he wrote Shot in the Dark. And Janie would always get up on the kit and play Shot in the Dark, and 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 and, and um, Phil would sing. And um, Janie, I was just like, when he did, when he didn't play much. But if you wanted to show me something, he said, he was he's just one of those guys that like, doesn't have a drum set, uh, doesn't play much. But then when he'd sit down, it was just amazing. You know, he'd always have a guitar. He'd always play a little guitar. He'd always sing. Um, once in a while, if the keyboard there, he'd play a little bit. But it was the drums. For him to sit down on the drums and have such a great pocket on not his setup, just on anybody's setup, and just be able to play so great, it always blew my mind. And I was I was loved drumming. And, there was obviously something about me and my drumming that he liked because he hired me and fired me three times and then died. <laughs> so so uh, Tony one had a question for well, you. Actually, actually, let's stick on this warrant thing. Is it true that Janie Lane hated cherry pie? Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. You know, because it was a, it was unfortunately the song that brought, you know, uh, you know, really find a, a, a face to the name and, and, you know, you know, that's, a, and that's a great question because later on when we started doing, um, we started doing uh, some other things and, and he started writing some other songs, you know, there's a band called Lit. Do you guys know the band Lit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've heard uh, of they're, well, Lit and they had a, a song called My, My uh, Own Worst Enemy. But prior to them becoming a 90s band, a 90s alternative band, they were um, they were a uh, hair metal strip band. And they were called, um, oh, God, why is it blank, blank? Razzle. They were called Razzle. Right. 
and and they crossed over right in 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 the early 90s and um Janie was writing songs that were alternative and 90s and when people found out that he was the writer because i know carrie kelly and and uh robbie crane and i were all sort of working with him carrie was writing with him he had these really great songs and uh and there there carrie never said who was in the band or never said who wrote the songs we had brought it, he had brought it to some people and they're like this is great this is great you know whatever it, just assuming it was carrie's thing and then they went in for a meeting somewhere at a label and uh and it was Janie. Janie had to go to the meeting. And um, and then the stuff that was great all of a sudden wasn't great because of the stigma of Warren. Now, if Janie would have stuck it out and, and lived longer and uh, gotten sober, I think he would have got on the backside of that curve. He would have accepted what cherry pie was um, mm -hmm. and that whole thing and been a, been a great songwriter and probably writing songs for people maybe he could have had another band maybe he could have had um something else you know happening with his life but um unfortunately he didn't make it being right. a friend of uh, Janie lane though what is your thoughts on warrant continuing on after his death um you know it's you know they're survivors i mean it, it, you know, it's like it's tough that's the tough that's the tough card to fill. I remember when um, I got asked to come back to the band because um, Janie had, had left and um, we we didn't even really audition any. We, we played with this guy named Jamie St. James from Black and Blue and boom, he was the guy. He was a friend of the band for a long time. Apparently Black and Blue was, was uh, had a couple of songs in that era and, and whatever. But what's really funny is I remember doing a photo shoot with Jamie St. St. James and we were at Niels Lowe's hours. Uh, he's a famous rock and roll photographer. We're at the studio. And we're doing this photo shoot. And Jamie St. James was kind of fucked up and trying to be all rock and roll, like Guns N' Roses and like leaning on everybody in the pictures and fucking whatever. And I just kind of looked at him as like, I'm like, dude, man, fucking tighten it up, man. We got to do this photo. It, this is kind of like a happy meal, you know, a McDonald's happy meal photo with all of us like normal and shit. We're not fucking Guns N' Roses. And we need these photos to whatever. Here's me who has no say in the band. I'm just a drummer, but I'm looking at Jamie like he's a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? And like, who the fuck is this guy? And he was maybe more fucked up than Jamie Lane ever was at a photo shoot or a gig or whatever. So it's, it's, that was funny. So they had Jamie. I think I think they jumped the gun on him. And um, eventually I got replaced again by Steven Sweet, who's, who's the original drummer, which he's really the second drummer. Um, I was a, I was the seventh, <laughs> ninth, and eleventh drummer, but he was really the second drummer. But he's the first drummer that everybody really knew. Um, uh, but so I, if I was to be replaced by him coming back with all the original guys and the Jamie St. James, or now it's Robert Mason, who's a fantastic singer. It's that's, those are hard shoes to fill. Um, mm -hmm. Right? You know, it's like there's a couple of things. Like as a drummer, I wouldn't want to be the drummer for Led Zeppelin. I wouldn't want right. to be the drummer for. I wouldn't want to be the drummer for Cheap Trip. I wouldn't want to be the drummer for the Police. There's just some shoes you just don't fill. For I me, wouldn't want to be the Van Zant brother either. Right. right. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But for me, for me, um, you know, playing in one had so many drummers and it was a different thing. And then when I got in, they were trying to make the songs a little bit more alternative or '90s with the different arrangements, and then we didn't have to have the hair. Seems that they've gone back to the hair. They've gone back to the nostalgia now with this whole um, touring um, rockaholic or whatever whatever the records are now. Um, and it's great. And they're having a great they're having a great run. Prior to COVID nineteen, they were killing it for the last couple of years. Um, um, but they, you know, they, that's just what they have to. You know, you have to move on. And and I think fans want to hear hear the bands. You know, the you know drummers kind of come and go. Um, maybe a guitar player or bass player but it's hard but robert mason and the band they've stuck with each other and they're doing they're great they're killing it i can't wait for them to get back out doing it again i can't wait until everybody gets back out and doing it but oh, i don't yeah. know did that answer was that long when did that sort of answer your That's question good. yeah yeah it answered it was a good answer robert mason's a great vocalist too like he used yeah. to help out they, he actually did an interview uh about when he used to be the vocal correction guy for ozzy osbourne he used to hide behind a uh amp and sing right. for ozzy when he couldn't sing really yeah, yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, that's that was a whole... sort of that's <laughs> sort of pre. Now everything's sort of on tape, and and they can just slide those vocals in and stuff now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that's yeah. that's crazy. There used to be guys like that, guys under the stage that played guitar or keyboards and stuff, and then they started bringing them up onto the stage. Obviously, if you're doing vocals for somebody, you're going to be side stage or whatever. But yeah. Well, I think the whole Aussie issue was was this was the '80s, and Aussie was so fucked up on drugs back then that he had to have somebody to help him. Yeah, but wait a minute, really quick, isn't he? Hasn't he sort of just been all? Isn't he still fucked up? Like, I mean, I'm I'm talking about like with all the Sharon having Sharon around, um, uh, all the Sharon uh, Osborne shit kind of kept him insulated. But I still think he was probably fucked. I don't know the guy. I never met the guy. But I think he was always kind of fucked up, and I think they just had him functioning, uh, able yeah. to function because he didn't have to deal with right. anything but just it's show crazy. up. It's crazy him being 71. He recently said that Ordinary Man was his first album done without any drugs involved. I'm like, dude, you just released an album with Black Sabbath in 2013. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, so during, that, during the Osborne show, he was completely loaded the entire time during the Osborne show because he yeah. didn't want to deal with everybody being in his house, the whole camera crew and everything And else. Sharon had cancer. Yep. Yeah. And so, and we all know that Ozzy doesn't deal well with loss. So. so with all the people you've played with, you've never met Ozzy yet? No, I've never met. You know, that's – no, I've never met Ozzy. And um, you know what's funny is a lot of times people think that – because we're in the business – like he sort of know everybody. I'm aware of people because of social media, but there's people I haven't met. There's people I don't care to meet um, ever um, and, and would be happy. And there's people I know that I don't care to ever see again. I, you know what I mean? Can, can but, I guess uh, one of them? Then, what's that? Can I guess one of the people you don't want to meet? Go on. Gene Simmons. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I no, I actually, <laughs> why, why is that? Because everybody keeps saying he's a douchebag. I don't know. You know what's funny is here's a funny story um, uh, uh, about that. Um, I had to do a rehearsal or two with Kiss because they were getting some kind of VH1 Icon Award in Vegas, and my friend uh, uh, Joey um, Lawrence, Joey Lawrence was his drum tech. He was also Eric Singer's. He was he was Eric Singer's drum tech when he was in Kiss. So. He right. couldn't make it in from Virginia or wherever he lives. So I did a couple of days in the studio. And I remember they came in. And you know, what's funny is I was I was a KISS fan back in the day. And then I kind of wasn't a KISS fan with with the Eric Carr and the Eric Singer and all that stuff. And I just kind of wasn't in it, into it the later and the they took the makeup off and then they yeah. the old shit was cool. So but I mean um, I like look I it up a little bit, but past that, not really. Yeah. So so yeah, me me too. It's a great song. Once I saw them play, he he sat in Paul Sandy sat in with a band called Metal School, which now they're called Steel Panther at yeah. the the Viper Room. And I was at the Viper <laughs> Room like for, with a hundred people in there, and he fucking killed Lick It Up, and it was amazing. He just jumped up on stage and jammed with them. But but uh, but anyways, going back to this rehearsal, I had to sub a couple of days, and I'm down there. I think Eric Singer, Eric Singer's a kind of a ball buster and a jokester, and he told Gene about my sack, and and uh, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're there and. And um, and then, you know they had to put wear their boots and they were just had their normal clothes on wearing their boots and you know they had played a few songs or whatever for this thing and um, Gene kind of kind of wanted first of all I thought I thought I I, I think I like Gene now more later for some reason I don't know why but um, um but uh but he sort of kind of tried to get me to do it but didn't offer any money so I so I was like. <laughs> so, so oh, no, they kind of they kind of tried to get me to do it, but I was just like I wasn't a fan, and I didn't want to be friendly. I just wanted to do my job, which was just to babysit Eric Singer with his drums for my friend Joey. You know what I mean? And um, so yeah, so but I actually kind of I kind of I don't know. I my, I think be, being on um, Stefan's show and and having Eric be a part of it, and we had a couple of the Kiss guys on or whatever, like uh, um, I think I, I started getting into it a little bit more, and kind of looking back at the whole spectrum of what right. this is and um and uh still like the old stuff um but I, i'm a more of a appreciative of what they've done in the business which is pretty incredible um um and how they've done i've never seen them live i've never seen them live and i i don't i only have a cup that's an eric singer cup so i'm not why did, why whatever didn't you just, why didn't you just show junior sack he'd be impressed 
<laughs> you know, you know why? Because I don't think I, you know. It's like it's weird. It's like I didn't know. That, like if maybe if I was on tour with them and I got to know them and I got, I got to like them, I don't think I put, really. Or if you put like kiss makeup on your sack and then show them. That'd be funny. That'd be funny. <laughs> That'd be funny, but no, you know what? I just, I just, whatever. It was just kind of a flash in the pan. I just, I don't know. I mean, I wish I could tell you something more or something better, but that's kind of my kiss story. Right on. Talk. Why did you leave that show? A lot of people. Why did I leave Stefan's show? You know, I, um, I had a tough time fitting in and I, I say this, finding my footing in the show because it was a new format for him and a new thing. Um, it was, uh, it was just hard for me. I didn't know, you know, it's like he want, would want me to be one way and then he'd want me to be another way. And then I was just trying to be my own way. Um, it was just, it was hard for me. I just didn't feel like I was contributing, um, like I could, could contribute, um, you know, better. So it was, it was always hard. I would, I would, uh, I mean, I think I did the show for a couple of weeks and then I took a week off and then Corey came on and I think Corey and Mike are great. And I love Steph and I love all, I'm all, I'm, I'm good with all those guys. Um, and I came back and I still just had a tough time. It was hard when there was so many guys on the screen. I remember there was uh, interviews that, that I would just sit there and we're on the screen and the guys getting interviewed and that we're all there. And then I couldn't ever get a word in or I couldn't get a question. And I always had notes and I always had things and, I just couldn't, I didn't want to step on anybody, but I didn't, I just couldn't find my place. So I just felt right. like, um, I just felt like I was, um, I just felt like I was not being utilized, but I also wasn't being good enough as, as for me, good enough to um, improv or jam with these guys on these, these things. I just, I just, I just wasn't. I just didn't feel like I was doing a good job. And, and, you know, um, it, you know, it's the show is Stefan and, and I've, I've always said that. And what's really funny is I, I, I just talked to Stefan yesterday, but, um, you know, he, he would always say to me, this is my show, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do it the way I do it. It's like, I, I know it's your show. It's like, you know, it's like, if you want to do your own show, do your own show. I don't want to do my own show, you know, whatever. I think, you know, I, I had said some some things to people like, um, I like the old Stefan that I used to play in a band with, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, the the this new Stefan with the show isn't the guy that I knew because he, you know, whatever in the band when I played with Stefan, he was a great. He first of all, Stefan's not the greatest baser in the in the world, but I'd rather play with Stefan in a band than anybody because he's got great attitude. He's, he's, he's real rock and roll. Um, he's, he's, he's just, he's got something. He's got it just like on the show. He's got something. Um, mm -hmm. and I've played with great bass players that are just total fucking dicks. And I'd rather play with Stefan anytime. And, but when we used to play with dad's porno mag and, 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 and Gilby Clark together, we had such a great time because you know what dad's porno mag was Ryan Roxy. Um, and Gilby Clark is Gilby Clark. So we were just side men. and Stefan was always just trying to remember the song, play the song, get to the next thing, and then go out. And then when we're done, we're having fun. It wasn't his show. So I didn't know the guy. Stefan said, I never changed. I'm the same guy. I'm the same guy as I was when we were in the band. Well, you, yes, I, I guess you are the same guy, but you didn't, it wasn't your band and you had no control. So this is your show. You have all the control. And I just want to be a good soldier. You know, I'm a side man. I just want to contribute to whatever band I'm in, whatever situation I'm in, I want, and I just had a really tough time, um, uh, you know, um, fitting in or feeling my my right. way around. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure all you guys want to say, oh, fuck, fuck Stephen and Deacon, fuck Mike McVeigh, fuck. And it's not, I love those guys. And and it shows doing good. And I I haven't, I I pop in when I can and I, and I chime in. Um, I, I try to watch episodes when I see a name, like I, um, you know, like Kenny Aronoff was on and, and, um, Sandy Gennaro was on. Um, I try to catch those things. I just don't have the time to watch them daily and participate daily and stuff. And, but it was a great thing. You know, the, you know, everybody's like, Oh, COVID-19, blah, blah, blah. You know, the greatest thing about COVID-19 is I have all these new COVID-19 friends. Like you're my friend now, right. Tony, yeah. you're my friend now. Um, um, Kath and, um, Anders and, and who's got a thing up here. 
Um, uh, when are you starting? Uh, and just, just, just the uh, Kanak and 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 uh, Funky Al Medina and Becca and I, and you know, and it's like everybody's done these things, and it's like I have all these new friends because you couldn't see any of your your regular friends. This is the new normal now. So right. um, it's like a great thing, and you know, yeah, it's like one big happy family. Yeah, and because of Step and Show, um, I got to meet all of you guys. So it's a really great thing, and and uh, like you know, but yeah. but when I when I left, I just I just I needed a break. I just that was it. I just had to just exit stage left gracefully. I'm welcome back. I'm gonna. I was gonna come on and do an interview with somebody for him, and it, the interview never worked out. But um, I'm sure. I mean, if he asks me to come on, and I'll come on. I mean, it's just it's just yeah. he's got his own thing going. You know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. it's and it's cool. And nobody's got a show like that. And it's so funny. He, he always he's probably puts a. He, it's I love the guy, but he puts himself like uh, you know your show is different than Stefan's show. The voice yeah. it show is different. Than, Ryan Roxy's show is different, to, but he feels like mm -hmm. it's all the same. It's, it's not, nobody's got a show like him. He's right. got, he's got a great, he's got, he's got a great thing. And, and he's, a, and he's a great guy. And, you know, being on the outside of it, not being a part of it, even though I'm always welcome to be a part of it. Um, but not having to be a part of it every day. It's, um, it's, uh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's better. And, and if I, think of something or a suggestion or something i can always tell him a guest or a wait hey, that was great interview whatever um but yeah no it's just it was it's a, to to, it, to, it's all, to to not do it and and whatever it's also tiresome to do a show every <clears throat> single day every single weekday all right it's got to get tiresome you know I don't blame you i couldn't you know it's well, you know, it's funny is in the beginning, I mean, there was a couple of times where there were three or four hour shows, you know what I mean? Um, and then Stefan doesn't want it to be scripted and doesn't want it to be sterile and doesn't want it to be whatever. He wants to be like, we're, we're all hanging out, having coffee. Um, and there's, there's magic to that. But you sort of, for me, being a drummer, I'm so structured. My cymbal has to be here. My snare drum has to be here. My tom has to be here. It, my notes for my songs have to be I, a song is eight bars long, 16 bar solo, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. My, I'm, I, my world is so blocked out and, and his is like this, this uh, Picasso painting with just shit everywhere. It was just hard for me to understand the structure and the, and the thing. Um, but that's me. Like I said, this is me. It was my, I didn't feel like I was fitting in and um, I didn't feel good when I was finished with the show, I feel like I could have been better. I could have contributed. So this is all me. It's nothing to him. It was nothing to Mike or Corey or whoever the people are on it. Um, it was just me just not feeling like I was doing a good job. You know, it's funny as I play in this band called the train wrecks and I remember, and I've known these guys for a long time. And I remember we do these rehearsals and I'd be playing and, and, and I, and I'd be like, man, I, fuck, I'm just sucking, I'm sucking, I'm sucking. And then after rehearsal, be like, oh, we love you. We love you playing so great and this and that. Sucking and sucking and sucking. And it's like, and I love those guys so much that I worked at being a better drummer in their band. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Even though sometimes I felt like I wasn't doing it as good as I could do it. Um, they encouraged me to keep going. So I think you know, life's short. I think you should try to be with the people you want to be with, work with the people you want to be with, spend time with the people who want to do the shows that you want to do like this show. Um, because we don't have a lot of time. There's a lot of time, but we don't have a lot of time. So I was just hard for me. So that, yeah. So yeah. that, you know, but, but the greatest thing that came out of Stefan's show is um, meeting all of you guys and, and all these people. And I know I'm missing comments and I'm not seeing stuff and I'm sorry, but you know, just whatever. <laughs> you you know. can't anyway, get them all. So, yeah. So, um, Tony so, is a big Eagles fan, so he has a nice question for you. What okay. was it like playing with Don Felder, and was it a surreal experience when or if you played Hotel California with him? Yes. Um, it was great playing with Don Felder. And um, I was just said this in the interview the other day. I had, um, because of Warrant, I was invited to Alice Cooper's golf tournament, and that's where I met Don. We actually jammed. We played um, like Take It Easy, and then we played like a blues song. And then I played like an Alice Cooper song, but then Tommy Clefettos was there and whatever. But um, 
um, I remember hanging with Don and um, afterwards, and it was crazy. We were, we were at, at like the bar and it was like Chuck Woolery Wool and his girlfriend, Chuck Woolery from like Love Connection 2 and 2. You guys are too young for that, but he's, he's like this great talk show host. Um, and uh, it was like Cheech Marin from Cheech and Chong and just weird. And so we're all hanging out and I was with my friend Tana, who's super social. And she just, she kind of glued this whole thing together. And, uh, and then Don had said, Hey man, I live in LA. And it's like, Oh, I live in LA. And he's like, I have a studio. I was like, Oh, cool, man. He's like, you should come to my studio sometime. I apologize for the phone. I don't even know why we have this line, but, um, <laughs> to make, to make, cause I never answer it. Never, never. People have house anyway. phones still. Well, I'm older than you guys and I have a wife and she <laughs> feels like we need to have a we need to have a landline, even though the landline is basically a cell phone because it's not wired. All, people, all, people, do is, all people do is ignore their house phones. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. But, um, but, um, but um, hanging with all these guys and I got to, you know, Don, I think Don thought, oh, you know, first of all, he knew me from Warrant because that's how it was announced. He was aware of the band Warrant. Um, and I played these two songs fine. And he and then um, he had invited me to a studio and I never went up there. But a week later, I got like a, a, a an email or, or a phone call. And he said, hey, I got I got invited to do a um, show uh, for Dennis Quaid in Texas for his charity golf thing. And, and we're we're the band. And he said, would you like to play drums with me on, at this show? And I was like, yes, I'd love to. So he sent me a CD and sent me a tape or CD and, and the song list. And then he said, come up to the house. Cause I want to just, before we go into rehearsal, we had a couple of rehearsals, one or two rehearsals. I want, um, I want to go through the, the set list with you. And I, there's some things I want you to change that aren't on the CD. So, um, I went up to his house and in, in like Beverly Hills and the Canyon, Coldwater Canyon, whatever. And, um, it was really cool, cool studio. We went down the list, we made some changes and, um, it was really cool. And, uh, and then we private jet to, to, Dennis Quaid's tournament uh, in uh, in Texas, and uh, it was crazy. And it was like, I remember. Here's the funny thing: me coming from the rock and roll world, I could always have a couple beers before I played. And uh, I remember we were doing a vocal rehearsal for the, the singers. We had a pretty big band too. It was um, a couple of guitar players with Don, a keyboard player, his son, a percussion player, his daughter Leah was a singer, background singer. Um, whatever. And there, and we're, we're at this, um, we're backstage and it's not even backstage. It's like a conference room, a ballroom and the big table. And I, uh, had a glass of wine and, and I'm kind of just sitting in on this vocal thing. And, uh, I take a sip of my wine and, and Don turns his head and he looks at me and I just took the wine and I just pushed it aside <laughs> and I thought, Oh, okay. I can't get fucked up on this gig. This is this isn't a warrant gig. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not gonna sign I'm not gonna sign some chicks some chicks uh, breast or anything like that. But um, what's funny is it, it 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 was you know he would walk the red carpet on these gigs and he he would um, do all the press and all that stuff and we were just you know sidemen. Um, so we did I don't know twelve or fifteen gigs over a couple of years these charities, and it was really cool. I'll tell you one thing we did, what was really weird was, is we, we were playing, it was a big band and we had a lot, we had, we had a, we had a big band of, of real players, but we also had some Pro Tools backing tracks, sweeteners. So like extra guitar, like acoustic guitar, or right. maybe another keyboard part, some background vocals. And this is all the shit that was like the Eagles, like um, their tape that they would backing tracks. So everybody plays with right. backing tracks, maybe, maybe Guns N' Roses and, 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 um, and ACDC don't, but I mean, the killers, like a band like the killers, I mean, you, you, you just have all this other stuff that you play to. Um, but anyway, there so, so it was many tracks weird... they recorded for those songs. Yeah. So there was all that stuff, but, but, but then you had all the real instrumentation. You still had a percussion yeah. player. You still had background vocals. You saw that, but this was just to fill in whatever. It was still a big band. So that was kind of, kind of surreal hearing. That's what they, they would play to. And we played, um, a bunch of Eagles songs and, and Don would sing them and, and um, it was great. And it was a great time. And, and, you know, again, he was just, he was in a lawsuit with the Eagles at the time. So he couldn't really tour or really do too much. So he was doing oh, that was in the middle events. of a lawsuit, huh? Yes. And I remember, I remember playing golf with him once and he, he said, he said to me like, um, 
yeah, I'm in the lawsuit now and it's for unrightful termination and misappropriation appropriation of a funds. Um, the Eagles, he was a partner in it and, and three partners can vote one partner out. You know what I mean? Right. And he got voted out. And uh, he was just asking because they had done the Hell Freezes Over tour and all this shit. And he only got so much money when it when it was over with. And he wanted to see the books and see where the money was being spent. And they, they denied him that. And um, it was a huge lawsuit. So over a couple of years. And, yeah. And um, I, I heard something they, about they were really screwing him out of royalties on Hotel California, too. Yeah. So there was a lot of stuff that was weird. But one of the weirdest things I think I remember about it is I think henley was supposedly on like the musicians board of equal rights and fairness and all this stuff so if he was suing the eagles and henley was a part of that that wouldn't look good for henley if he was screwing right. felder out of money so they eventually settled out of court and uh and then don uh don started do touring and whatever and and uh and uh He's he's had again. His band is almost like Warren. He's had um, a bunch of different drummers uh, right. in that band. So and um, but um, it was a great experience. It was he was just he was cool, man. And he I remember after the first gig, I think he sent me an email or a letter. I think it was a I think it was a I think it was an email. But it was like oh, it was so nice to share the stage with you. And I'm looking forward to doing it again. It was like that's kind of like weird. Like nobody in Warren or. Uh, or Tiger Army or uh, or Gilby Clark has ever right. sent me a thing like that. But I think that's just old school professional kind of uh, demeanor or whatever. You know, or you know that saying, you know, that saying it's like never try to meet your heroes. But it's like it's it's nice to know that one of my guitar heroes being Don Felder is not not an asshole. He's a nice dude. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Um, it's funny because he is a very nice dude. He is a very nice dude and he is very like I'm not a huge Eagles nut, but um, right. apparently I did see the movie just recently, like six months ago, I saw the movie um, that, that the documentary or whatever was about them. Right. Um, for as, as um, shitty as it, the situation was for him in that band, he's definitely not like that with anybody he w works with. Um, and that's right. why people want to work with him and play with him. And, and that um, band was so dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I do remember um, a funny story is I told Don um, I wanted to get a kit for these gigs that we were doing. And I said, was there a specific color that he might like? Because I didn't care, I, whatever. And he said, he said, I don't like sparkles. Don't get anything sparkle. I said, what if I get something like a sunburst, kind of like, you know, your guitar, your Les Paul? I said, oh, that'd be great. And uh, and I remember for that gig, I had to get timbales. And I did have timbales for the uh, the one little drum fill in, uh, in uh, Hotel California. Yeah, it was weird. It was weird. And I was also in that band. Um, I was also playing with guys who played with Henley and, and all these really heavyweight sidemen musicians. And I was from the, the downery rock and roll, um, you know, uh, warrant band, uh, which was a different kind of band to these kind of corporate structured musicians. So, um, but yeah, it was cool. It was, it was, a, it was a great experience. I'm glad I got to do it. Um, and it's just, you know, whatever. It's uh, it's it was it was a good time while I got to do it. That's you awesome. Lived a pretty wild life. Like I applaud you. <laughs> right. All the people, all the people you from from balls on on a porn star's head uh, uh, in in <laughs> Vegas to uh, to playing Hotel California with. Uh, I, I, I I aspire to live the life you've lived, putting my balls on porn <laughs> stars' heads. And <laughs> does this guy know how to party or what? <laughs> and put your balls on her head and just be like, you can call me Master Chief now. So funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I have some questions from the audience, which is... Go on. Pink Sock Talk, as we like to call well, pink it. Pink Sack Talk. Pink Sack Talk. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so from Alex, what makes a good drummer... What distinguishes drummers like Carmen and Buddy Rich apart from others? What makes them unique? Okay, keep that question up there because that's a that's a loaded question. What what makes you a good drummer? Um, obviously, style, um, uh, proficiency in playing the best you can play for a band. Um, a guy like Carmine Apice and Buddy Rich, they're two different era of drummers. Um, 
but well, Buddy Rich is probably noted to be one of the greatest drummers that had ever lived. I mean, he he started out in vaudeville, which was this uh, this old school uh, traveling show vaudeville at like four years old or three years old, and he just he had been playing seventy years till he passed away, and he was just doing things that like other people were weren't doing. Um, um, so, but that's a different era of music and that's a different era of drumming um, a guy like Carmine, a piece growing up in the fifties, uh, was influenced by, um, uh, buddy, but, but brought something else to his thing. They're completely different drummers. Karma is a phenomenal drummer, um, educator. He's written books. Um, he invented his drumstick that has a tip at the, at both sides. The butt end has a tip. Um, he's just, um, he's done it all, uh, Carmine. And you know, it's funny is that genre and style of music for Carmine right now isn't in fashion. It's sort of now it's uh, nostalgic or whatever, but he's still a great drummer and played great. And his brother Vinny Apice is, is uh, or Apice, I should say, is, uh, is another uh, great example of that. There's something uh, in the water in all of those New York era drummers that, that they, they can play, but it's it's having a pocket. It's having um it's having a groove, and and that's all that's all subject to who you're playing with, um where you place the snare drum beat or the kick drum beat, um, and how does it feel, and how do you make the band feel, and this is all like I said, it's subject. It's like you can't, um like Eric Singer and Kiss is different than Peter Chris, and Peter Chris is different than Eric Carr. They're mm -hmm. different drummers. I have a friend named Andrew Scambotti from from Cleveland. Um, the mistake by the lake who's a great drummer and he was in a kiss band what's really funny he looked like eric singer sorry he looked like peter chris but was inspired by eric singer and in his setup and the way he played and um and that's just a different thing it's not good or bad or whatever it's just what you like um so i don't know am i answering this what's the me i hope i did i mean it's it's kind of long it's kind of long-winded but <laughs> Two different drummers, you know what I mean? But um, but right. both great in their own right. Hey, Mike, it's your nephew, Chai. Hi. Hey, it's that's your uh, nephew. Th that's my nephew, yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello, my nephew. Trick questions <laughs> here. Um, there there is a next question that has um something to do with the previous question. Go on. Um, what skills do you need to be a good drummer besides a coke can? <laughs> you know, you know what's funny is um, what skills you need. You, I mean, first of all, you have to be sort of well versed in a few different styles um, that that speak to you. I mean, I know a lot of drummers who could play jazz, Latin, fusion, metal, disco, funk, punk. They can all do that, but I mean, we all specialize in something or should specialize in something and you should i mean again like having time for me being older my time of playing i don't know how many years i'm going to be able to play you know is it 10 more years is it 20 more years is it two more years i mean who knows um you should play the things that you, you you're you're best at like i'm not a latin fusion drummer do you know what i mean can i play some latin stuff to get me through yes um but that's not my thing um um you know, I grew up playing to the radio and uh, records. So when you play into a radio or a record, it's sort of like something that, that everybody uses when you're learning instrument as a metronome. So um, I in, innately had a good um, reference for time. And then now I always play to when I can, I'm always playing to the metronome. It's like a it's like another member to the band um, to reference tempos and stuff. Sometimes you're on stage and and your uh, your heart beats up. So something feels um, like it's too slow, but you have to trust the metronome that you rehearsed with in your ear um, and it becomes your, your, your second guy. So I've been doing that for a long time and that's helped me. Um, the other thing too is there's, there's, a, there's a, the saying that we've always heard as drummers or read in the magazines, um, there's some stupid saying that some drummer said, and it's, it's this thing that sticks in my head, the, uh, the beat is I'm the drummer and the beat is where I say it is. And it's like, you know, if you want to work and be in a band, it's, you know what, the beat is not where you say it. Unless you're Buddy Rich and it's your band, the Buddy Rich big band, yeah. um, then you can do whatever the fuck you want. 
But if you're playing in Tiger Army, the beat is wherever and however and however different Nick wants it every night and every show and every moment. You're following, you're making the adjustments where he's comfortable. comfortable. Um, there's some singers, uh, other singers, you know, it's like if you're playing too fast, they can't get all the words out. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's you, if you want to work, it's, you know, take your ego out, which I don't have an ego. I'm proud of things that I've done, but I don't have an ego. I have a method and I have a reasoning for things that I do, but it, but it, it goes out the door when you're working for somebody, a singer like, um, Nick from Tiger Army or Don Felder or, um, Jamie Lane or, or whatever. So, um, you gotta, you gotta, um, be able to flow with the band. The terrible thing now is there's so many, um, it, the music's changed and things have changed. And now there are kids on YouTube, they're, they're, they're drumming influencers and they're, they're mm -hmm. amazing. And then I, and everybody sends me the little five-year-old girl playing, you know, fucking system of a down song or whatever, or, or the, the, the three-year-old guy playing Rush's Neil Peart. It's incredible. I love it. It's cute, whatever. And I hope it, their passion gets them to, to do music when they, when they grow up. But what sucks now is people are playing not with people. They're just doing these really amazing sounding, looking, playing style videos. And that's what you see on YouTube. And it's a constant feed of this stuff. And I, I feel bad for these younger guys who have never gotten to be in a tour van and, um, or, or been on the back lounge at a warrant uh, show and seen a sack showing. Because that shit ain't ever going to happen, especially with all the Me Too stuff now. There's no grease to the rock and roll anymore. People are just going to stay in their room and they're going to do these videos. And it sucks for them because there's a, there's an experience playing and um, playing a different venue every night, playing a different crowd. And it sucks that a lot of these kids are never going to see that. So, but then hey, again, hey, they don't know it. They don't know hey, that. Hey, you know Tony, I mean? if, we go to a, if, we, if we go to a Tiger Army show and you see me and Mike disappear to the back... <laughs> you know, you know, I'm going to a sack showing. I mean, yeah. As long Bring as I don't get money, propositioned, <laughs> Bring your money. Bring your money. As long as I don't get propositioned by a dude who looks like Kyle Gass, I'll be good. Oh yeah, god, uh, that story. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I have Venmo and PayPal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do Cash App. <laughs> What's that? It's the it's the uh, <laughs> it's another thing like Venmo and PayPal. Okay. You should start an OnlyFans. <laughs> it's showing your right. sack. <laughs> so funny. So we have uh, more questions from the Go on. people. Um, we have Kanak, who has a question. Never heard Hello, of Hello, big brother. Good to see you. <laughs> Let me get it to work on this. Hello, big brother. Hello, big brother. Good to see you on the Pings Hot Podcast. Well, question. I don't really have a question for you, but I would like you to tell the watchers and listeners of the Beams of Podcast the story behind the original name of the Good Kitty. I think it'll be fun. See you and enjoy. Hey, can you do me a huge favor and can you run that one more time? Because I had to tap my iPad to hear it halfway through and it was sort of choppy. Can you just run it for me okay. one more time? Yep, we got it Thanks. one more time. Hello, big brother. Good to see you on the Pings Hot Podcast. Well, question. I don't really have a question for you, but I would like you to tell the watchers and listeners of the Pings Hot Podcast the story behind the original name of the good kitty. I think it'll be fun. See you and enjoy. The story of the original okay, if name I... of the good kitty. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, we have a cat named Good Kitty. Um, but we saved this cat. Uh, her owner had passed away. We went to see this cat. Our cat passed away like six months earlier. It was called to Tootsie. My wife wasn't really ready to get a cat. So we went up to see this cat and they were going to put it in the shelter. I talked to my wife into like, if we're going to get a cat again, we need to go now. Let's, this cat seems cool. So the cat comes to our house. It's on the counter of our, our, uh, our, and, and, it, and the cat was called good, um, 
good kitty or maybe the old the old lady called it precious or good kitty is what what we knew so um this um this cat um got on the counter of of, of the of the kitchen and it's like looking around and its tails up t top and it's and its rear side is to me and i said oh my god look nora it's it's its ass is black it's it's like this tan cat but it had this black asshole and and, and she said mike that's not it's that's not it's not her asshole it's her vagina and i said oh my god we have to call this cat black pussy we have to call this black pussy. <laughs> so, so and and she was cool with it so so it's black pussy the cat but so fast forward to like a year and a half later um we had, uh, a few months later we had gotten a month later we got these two stray alley cats we we had them fixed and then we never released them there in our house she was the first thing uh, sleeve and tiny dancer were the next two two bonded pair of brothers from the alley um that would kind of go after her and all this stuff and 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 sort of attack her but they were really just playing with her but she 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 was fearful and so my wife when i was on tour reached out to jackson galaxy this guy from animal planet planet who's the the cat whisperer or the cat daddy and anyways fast forward we got accepted to be on his show and they did a thing where he'd come to the house and uh fix our fix our cats but of course we um we just said the cat is good kitty and um for the for the for the show and i remember the first day of filming you know you couldn't talk to the guy and the producer was you know like keeping you away and so whenever you did film it was like real and natural and so halfway through that day of shooting i i i, I was talking to him i said you know we're gonna come clean here i just want you to know that, that the cat is not good is not named good kitty the cat's name is black pussy but we had to change it for tv and they just absolutely loved it and of course they said yes of course you we're not going to say that on tv anyway so it's an episode from a few years ago i think 2016 somewhere online my wife knows just inbox <laughs> her at i am scampy on instagram and she'll tell you where to find it so yeah so that's where it came from sorry and talking social media since i didn't bring them up yet i do have your socials here i don't have them all because i wasn't sure what all you still used but i have you perfect on face excellent on facebook at uh, mike the mike visano the mike visano and on instagram it's just mike visano and then www.tigerarmy.com thanks you that's follow, exactly it if you want to follow uh this guy oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the yeah. Florida Republican tax Pasco County tax collector. There's not a worse person that you could have the same name of. <laughs> well, Trump maybe, or or Trump. or Biden, depend or Biden. I like this or, guy. Or or or, 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 or you I mean I mean everybody's gonna hate somebody. You know what I mean? Somebody hates Trump. Somebody hates Biden. Somebody hates Obama. Somebody hates Mike Fasano. Which Mike Fasano? <laughs> So the next <laughs> question is by uh, Joe. I think her last name's pronounced Bashir. I'm really awful at pronouncing last names because we're oh, all on I the internet. Joe, I call her Joe Basher. Joe Basher, great. Now, I was, see, it's a like Kinga Anna, and then Joe Basher. <laughs> great stage names. I love it. it sound, that sounds like the that sounds like the new WrestleMania. <laughs> Joe Basher yeah. versus Kinga Anna. Here's the uh, Joe's question. Hey, Mike. Joe Bash. As you Sorry, it's not popping up. Hey Mike, Joe Bash. As you are my drum hero, if you could be a superhero, who would you be? Okay, it, it chopped out. Did you guys hear it? Could you tell me what it was? I, I heard it. Did you hear it, Tony? Yeah, hey, I heard it. it. Yeah. Okay, uh, Joe wants to know if you could be a superhero, who would you be? You know, it's 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 a new superhero that nobody knows about. That's what it would be. Um, you know what I've always goofed on and joked about that that I have always wanted to do if I wasn't a drummer? I want to work at a salon and I want to be the person that checks people in. And gets them coffee. And I want to hang out with all those fucking batshit crazy hairdressers. I am obsessed with their whole worlds. 
So I would be like the superhero guy with uh, checking people in and making them feel comfortable and then being in all of that drama with all of the hairdressers. That's a superhero mm -hmm. character. Can, can, I, can I add a little something to the superhero? We could actually get Go a on. comic book made. If anybody's listening, you're a hairdresser by day and you're sack man by night. <laughs> you know who calls me sack man? Mick Fleetwood. He calls me the sack man. Mick Fleetwood? Yeah. <laughs> Loves it. Does he does he sing dreams while you're like swinging your sack around? <laughs> what an amazing what an amazing no. This funny. I haven't seen him since his rebirth of being cool uh, because of that <laughs> video. It's pretty funny. Um, no, I haven't. But I should send him a note and uh, and tell him how amazing it is. I'm sure he's probably changed his number already. But um, no, I, I worked with Fleetwood Mac and and Mick um, many years, and um, I remember Mick was become was sober. And I wasn't sober and I was in warrant. I was partying and, and he was like, Hey man, <clears throat> if you're ever partying, call me, man. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. I remember I did call. I was fucked up and I called him. I don't know where he I was. You know what? I think I was on the road and it was like two in the morning on the East coast. And I think I called him and it must've been 11, you know, it, uh, you know, I was like, Hey man, I'm all fucked up, dude. I'm all fucking fucked up. And he was like, oh, I, I don't think he really wanted me to call him. But I called him when I was fucked up once. This is years ago, fucking a long time ago. But it was pretty funny. But um, but, but when my but, wife and I got married, when I when we got married, it was really cool. We did a cruise um, to the Hawaiian Islands. And he has a, a restaurant in Maui. And he totally, he wasn't on the island. He was on, on the mainland. But he had his people totally take care of us uh, for dinner. And Mick's a great guy. How did we go from Sack Man to Mick Fleetwood? Because he called me Sack Man. That's what he called me, Sack Man. No, you, no, like you, you at night you like swing your sack around and hit people with it. <laughs> no, no, just, it's all you know sack what? It's man. all folklore now. Like you know what? I think I, you know what? I think I might. I don't remember. It was a little foggy back then. I think I might have did the coke can thing for Mick at the studio once, and so he had to see it. Yeah, when we first sort of met and started working together. It was you showed Mick Mick's Fleetwood? great. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Mick is such a, an enchanting person. He's great back in the day. We have to get him on the show and ask him about. Uh... <laughs> so the next question is from. Well, hey, I hate uh... to do it, but I got to be going. Okay, buddy. Okay. We'll see you. Gotta go pick up the Tony, kids from school. Tony, nice to meet you, buddy. Hey, you too, buddy. I'll see you we later. should do a part two. Yeah, part two. Okay. <laughs> You're like, uh, right, if, this, if, this, if this one doesn't get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it was nice meeting you. I will talk All to right. you guys later. All right. All right see ya. So, Mike, the, ne the next question we have is from uh, Funky of Funky TV, the voice it show. It's a cat-related oh, yeah. question. Go on. Hey, Mike's and everyone. Um, it's Funky with PT. Hold on, it's being weird. Hey, Mike's and everyone. Hey, Mike's and everyone. Um, it's Funky with PT. And um, I'm so glad you're finally on the legendary Pink Sock podcast. And I hope you're having fun, which I'm sure you are. So PT and I wanted to know a little more about your new cat, or as you call it, Meow Meow. So yeah, I would love to know more, and thank you. Bye. You kind of discussed Meow Meow a little bit, but is there anything else you want to tell us about Meow Meow? Well, Meow Meow was a, a cat that's been hanging around. Like, there's like we live off of an alley, and so there are these alley cats. This cat mm -hmm. has been creeping around, and he just and he just zipped by me right now. Um, this cat has been creeping around, so he was around, and, and Nora started feeding him, and um, uh, we uh, were we made an appointment to. to um, have him fixed so there aren't more cats coming around. But we've also had in the neighborhood, we've had this bobcat, um, a wild bobcat who um, now has eaten my neighbor's four chickens. He, um, he um, is, we've seen him in the backyard. We've seen him around. Um, he's eaten other pets in the neighborhood. So the city of Burbank was uh, trying to trap him. So instead of trapping him, they trapped Meow Meow. We didn't see Meow Meow for a while. We might, Meow Meow was gonna be eaten by the bobcat. 
Uh, but but not. But a friend of ours said the cat is in the Burbank shelter. So they fixed him and they gave him shots and all this stuff. And then we said, we've got to rescue him and uh, from the shelter. So we rescued him from the shelter. We brought him home. He's been with us for about seven weeks now. Still haven't touched him. Um, he's he was he's feral. So he um, he doesn't know humans, but because he's been around the house and you know, he smelled the other cats. The other cats have smelled him through the window prior to him coming in. We gave him a bedroom. We put him into a, a cage in the big cage in the bedroom and the, let him uh, get acclimated. Um, and then uh, we open the door so the other cats can go and smell and whatever. We we sort of acclimated him right. And then we just eventually open the the cage door so he have a safe place in the cage if he wanted or come out. It seems like every day I see uh, him becoming a cat. He's starting to play with cat toys. Mm -hmm. he, he plays with the other cats. He still is terrified about us and doesn't know what we are, even though we feed him. Um, he hissed at me this morning. Um, but uh, um, he's a cool cat and we're just trying to, he's, you know, he's been neutered and, and, uh, and uh, we're just trying to give him a better life. And uh, so that's what he is. But I call him new cat. I'm, I'm sure he'll, I call him Wiley Coyote because he looks like a coyote and, and he's wild. And that was a, that was a, a, a TV sh a cartoon. Um, but yeah, I'm sure he, he'll get a nickname, but he's technically Meow Meow and she named him. So, or just Wiley. But I call him you cat. Yeah. I just call him Wiley. Anyway, so that's our, that's our cat. So we have, now we have four cats. It's kind of fun crazy in a way but you know they're our family so so this this next question um i don't know who this guy is i don't even know how we got this question he just randomly sent it to me but uh his name is um ron ricky or something it's just mm -hmm. hey mike i love everybody and the... hey mike i love everybody in the world of the pink sock how y'all doing Roxy here. Well, Mike, um, I have a question um, because I don't really know the answer to it. And being that both of us are way into golf these days, um, when did you get involved in golf and really take it seriously? Because I don't remember either of us when we were playing back in that band. Do you see that DPM right there or maybe the original sticker right there? By the way, folks, this is the new studio that I will be uh, sort of broadcasting in the trenches out of. See, I had to plug the podcast one way or another. But uh, yeah, we've switched studios and this is the new room. So hopefully you like all the little um, accoutrements that we have uh, put out. And looking forward to talking more about, uh, what, am I, what am I talking about? Enough about me, more about me. Uh, no, about you, Mike. It's always about you. It's all for you, Damien. Um, here's the story. What is the story with your golf? You know, when did you pick up golf? And and can you tell the listeners and the viewers about our uh, cool golf experience uh, with Trey Cool and where we golfed at? The golf, uh, I think the golf course is literally blocks from your house. And uh, let's talk a little bit about Burbank and a little bit about golf. That's my question. Bye. I think he's your biggest fan. I don't know who that guy was, but he wants to know about golf. Is that cameo? <laughs> was that cameo? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think. Am, is, uh, am I getting I charged Kat, for that? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be in your your uh, PayPal app. <laughs> is that twenty two ninety nine or twenty two seventy seven? That's what it is. Um, no, that's his only fans. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, um, how did I get involved in golf? Uh, playing with Warren, the, Eric Turner and Jerry Dixon played uh, golf and they would play on show days that we'd get into town on the bus early and then they'd get off the bus and they'd play and then they'd make it to sound check. And, and, uh, we were sharing, um, day rooms together. And I remember, um, they would have the golf channel on or, or whatever, and they'd be watching it and I'd be just like, oh, great. I can, I can nap to this. You know what I mean? Uh, cause it was just so like, to me, boring. Cause I didn't know it. Um, and then, uh, one day, um, we had some, some, we had a, we had some friends that were on the PGA tour. They were caddies and, uh, they'd come to the shows and they said, Hey man, do you want some clubs? And we can hook you up some clubs. And, 
I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll, I'll get, take some clubs. And then I got some clubs and, and uh, some golf balls and, and uh, you know, some, some shoes. And I went to the course. I took a les- lesson with this guy named Pete Wilson somewhere in upstate New York. And I know Pete and I remember his name because now he's, he's, a, he's a drummer and, he's, and, he's, and he lives in Nashville and he's, he's really uh, talented. And he's, he's a great golfer and he's a great coach. Uh, teacher. And then um, he, uh, he's now he's a drummer, but, um, but I remember I, I, I took some lessons with him and I played and we played a whole 18 rounds. And I think I hit the ball once on the 18th hole. I hit it and it was that thing. It was like that, almost that drug. They, they say it's like, it's that one shot that makes you want to come back. And then I was up every morning at when we got to, to these show dates and, and uh, we were on the golf course by eight in the morning and we play these golf courses. And then we go to Central Tech and we do the show. And and so that's the, the, the warrant guys. But I remember um, at that time there was a, a guy named Jesper Parnovic and he's from Sweden and, and Ryan is from Sweden now. Um, and he had style, man. He had like a, a, a upright uh, brim on his hat. He wore like, bright orange colors, almost like he was like the modern day Rodney Dangerfield from Caddyshack. He had so much style. And so he never really won anything big, but he was always a guy to watch. And I was like, man, this guy's punk. I'm into it. I dig this guy. Cause everybody else was so drab and boring and, and um, they would wear tan and beige. And, and this guy like had hot pink and fluorescent orange and, you know, uh, tennis ball yellow. And, and, uh, and he was cool, man. And, and he was funny and he was just, it, it, really great golf course. So I sort of had a little inspiration and then we played, you know, and we just started playing and, and, uh, and, uh, that's how, that's how I started. Um, fast forward and, and what Brian was saying, referring to the stuff in the background, dad's porno mag. No, I was not playing golf in dad's porno mag, um, those days. And I don't even think Ryan was, Ryan was an af- athlete. Ryan loved to play badminton and ping pong, ping pong. Oh my God. Ping pong mm. and poker were his, his two favorite things. Um, but, uh, but we weren't doing any of that golf stuff back then. So thanks to the warrant guys. Um, I got into golf and, uh, um, I love playing. It's fun. And that's how I got to play in the Alice Cooper golf tournament. And it's funny how things happen, but, um, we also, one time we, I live in Burbank and I live right by this golf course called the bell. And one time, um, I think I was working on the green day record and, uh, and Ryan was, I believe, he's still living in LA. Which Green Day he record wasn't. were you on? Oh, I don't. I mean, I work on a bunch of them. It was probably, um, it was probably like Insomniac or something like that. Um, and uh, oh, you know, you know what? Maybe Trey was just in town. Whatever. All three of us were in town. I made mm-hmm. a golf thing, and uh, we played golf with Trey at uh, DeBell, and Trey, Trey really got into golf. It's really funny as. When I first started working with Green Day or playing with Ryan, I didn't even know about golf. So it's really funny just being like 10 years or 15 years into a friendship um, that we start playing again and uh, playing this 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 fun sport, fun challenging sport. But we played with Trey and I think um, I think Trey got Ryan really high. Like, like Ryan doesn't smoke weed, but I think Ryan smoked some pot and Trey had the super fucking crazy, crazy fucking pot and Fucked Ryan's game up. It was great. It fucked everybody else up who t- t- took a hit of his joint. But uh, anyways, have you? Ever Thank you tried for the question, up- Ryan. I miss you. Thanks for uh, thanks for being a, a friend. Have you, have, have you uh, tried edibles? Speaking of pot, you know the thing about edibles for me is like I remember my manager had sent me like um like a, a pot brownie or something, and I I think I ate half of it. Mm-hmm. And um, I started to get high a couple hours later. It was like 11 o'clock or 11.30. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm feeling high. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> and uh, and then I woke up at like 5 in the morning. Still high. And I was fucking melted into my bed. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I thought I had a heart attack because I couldn't move. And I thought, oh, my God, what's wrong? And then, and then, I, thought, and then I, I, I couldn't get – because I had to pee really bad. <laughs> I pushed myself up and I was like, oh, okay, I'm just really high, A to L, I'm really high. And it was such a fucking nightmare. I was so not into it. Like, and then my friend said, uh, my manager said, oh, no, just have a quarter of it or whatever. And then I did a quarter of it and I just kind of didn't dig it. And then I, I, my back's been fucked up. So I got some CBD with like, it's like a little bit of weed in it. And I was like, ah, fuck, I, I just, I don't know. I'm not, 
I'm not into the edible thing. Oh, and my wedding, if you want to speak to Trey Cool, my wedding uh, bachelor party, San Francisco. I'm working on the Green Day records. We're up in San Francisco. Uh, a couple of my friends fly up for this bachelor party. Billy Joe is my honorary best man. Throws this thing for me at the Hustler Steakhouse. The Hustler Steakhouse is a strip bar steakhouse. To make a long story short, um, Trey Cool has this hot chocolate bar that he has. We're at a big table. There's like 20 people. I met one at the table. I had a couple of beers. I had a martini, um, and and uh, and uh, and then um, this this pot, you know. So it's very little booze, right? The pot bar co comes by, and it's like it looks like Swiss chocolate. It's like amazing, <laughs> and it's wrapped properly. It didn't smell like weed. It was like the finest shit ever. So it came by me. I had a couple little pieces, a little corner of it, a couple of little chunks off of it, and then it came back by like 10 minutes later and I had a couple more, right? And then we ate dinner and then it fucking hit me. The stripper comes over, sits on my lap to give me the lap dance on this table and everything just went like this. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. And I, and I kind of picked her up and I put her to the side and I was like, I gotta get some air. So I found some out to the club and on, a, on like this balcony overlooking San Francisco. And I'm hanging on the rail for like 45 minutes and a couple of the guys come out and said, oh man, you're just ripping. It's just, you know, you just had too much chocolate or whatever. And and it was a fucking nightmare, right? And then I went back in, sat me at the end of the table, another stripper fucking on me. Boom, just went fucking sideways again. Went back outside, hanging on the rail. I start puking. I'm just, it's a fucking nightmare, right? So they got to carry me out of there. Now it's like 11 o'clock, right? <laughs> on my bachelor party night. They carry me, they carry me out like literally down the stairs, these stairs, I swear to God, I, I couldn't open my eyes because I was, I was like on a roller coaster ride. I felt like I was standing on their shoulders, right? <laughs> and I'm grabbing at the, 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 the stairway uh, rails, trying to hold on, even though they had me laid out like a fucking coffin, you know what I mean? As they're carrying me out, I'm trying to grab on a shit. It's a nightmare. Get onto the party bus. I fucking puke some more. My fucking brother-in-law, who I love, is like, what'd you do to him? Did you give him heroin? Is he fucking blah, blah, And I was just fucking, whatever. Turns out I ate triple strength pot on this bar. It triple strength. <laughs> Fuck, it was horrible, right? So I'm in bed in all my clothes by 1130. They wheeled me across the fucking thing. And there's just one photo of me getting wheeled in a wheelchair. I'm fucking dead. It's like my head. My head was like de dead. My feet were dead. I couldn't feel anything. I put me to bed. I wake up at like 7 in the morning or 7.30 in the morning. And I have to call my fiance. She's like, how come you didn't call me last night? It's like, oh, I got fucked up. And I, I was in bed by like 11.30, but I was really fucked up. I didn't want to tell her how bad it was because she would have been pissed. And it was horrible. And, uh, and I was fucked up. And then I had to get to the studio by noon. Right, and I had to fly, fly home that night because I was flying to San Francisco every Monday, I'll work all week, fly home Friday. I was so fucked up. Thank God we didn't do drums that day. It was just a fucking nightmare. I was fucked up for a week with this. It was a nightmare, and um, it wasn't fun. If anybody said that like, nobody's ever OD'd on on pot, that's the closest thing to OD, and I think I could do, even though I did OD. But um, it, every, so it was just a fuck. It was a nightmare, and uh, and uh, I remember getting home. And flying home and I went to kiss my wife in the car and she did did the, the hard turn of the head and I knew I was in trouble. But I felt like shit for a week. It was a nightmare. Anyways, you're Trey not, Cool you're pot, not, golf. You're supposed to take little amounts, not I half know, of I know, I know, but I'm a fucking idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> you might so have enjoyed it more if you actually took a little bit. Oh, that. I know. I didn't. I fucking ruined it. But you know what? Perfect. For me. Think about me. What if I didn't get all fucked up? Could I have done a sack showing? Could I have gone on the pole that night at the with the Hustler Club? You know what I mean? Who knows? So maybe T Trey saved me. Maybe he insists that he saved me. At least you're night. not as dumb as I think. Um, I think Ryan said it was John Karabi who drank sh six shots of absinthe. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we do have one more video question. Kath was on okay. my case about it. Um, <laughs> look at her. Look, there she is. <laughs> this is from uh lynn barker she is in the uh comments i'm sorry for missing your question it was way back in our conversation with kath i just now saw it so here it is hello mike nice to see you on pink sock 
Um, I was just wondering what type of music you listen to and who's been your biggest influence throughout your career. Thanks a lot. Hi, Lynn. How are you? It's nice to put a face to the name. Right. Except your stage name's a little too nor normal, Lynn. Because um, <laughs> it's Lynn Barker. It's like as normal as Mike Pisano. Um, like who are Barker? Big, who, what am I listening to? You know what's funny is, uh, to make a long story short, um, I seem to be always listening to music that I'm working on, um, like rehearsal tapes and stuff like that. So I'm trying to refine drum parts and song structure and things like that. I listen to a lot of that because I have to, and whatever band I'm playing, and I play in a great band, Train Rex, and I play with uh, uh, this great singer songwriter guy named John Gregory, and then uh, obviously Tiger Arms. So I'm always trying to refine that stuff. Um, and the other thing that I listen to a lot is my friends' bands that haven't made, um, aren't on the radio or, or, or whatever. That doesn't even matter anymore because there's no radio or record deal. But I'm always listening Spotify. to stuff that they, they <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm listening to stuff that they turn me on to. Um, and I find it really cool because nobody else has really, not many people have heard it. But um, I do, um, um, as far as uh, what I'm listening to that like you or anybody else would listen to, is I find myself going back to some of my favorite bands and um, like The Police. And I listen to a lot of The Police and Stuart Copeland is one of my favorite drummers. I play nothing like him. I sound nothing like him, whatever. Um, um, but I'm always kind of going back to those good times and, uh, and uh and the, that that different era of music when things were simpler than they are now, were at least mm -hmm. not as stressful. But um, that's the kind of stuff I, I, I'm 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 into. But I but I'm also really into jazz and big band. And I find myself um, on the, uh, the the local LA radio station that plays jazz and listening to that. And again, I, I play nothing like that. I can't play that stuff. But all of that stuff. Stuart Copeland and the jazz stuff is in a little bit of a way, it's it's an element to my drumming or, or inspiration for my drumming, um, even though it, you would never hear anything or see anything or notice anything obvious. It's just, it's part of my, what I think about when I play sometimes is to swing a little bit more and or uh, or uh, syncopate a little bit more, or You're whatever. You're a jazz fan. Are you a fan of Frank Zappa? You know what's funny is I'm not, I, I only know i don't know much about them no i'm not i'm not a fan and i don't not that I'm not i don't like him i just don't i haven't been exposed to the right stuff some of the stuff i've heard is a little bit too of a, of a nightmare for me and i mm -hmm. don't understand it and that's probably why i'm not a fan i'm not not i'm not i'm not a fan yet but i don't mm -hmm. listen to it I've, I've probably heard the hits whatever they were but um i knew that zappa is is was it was a was a song uh uh, Valley Girl is is how I heard about Frank Zappa because he produced mm -hmm. that song and had his band play on her thing. So no, I'm not. But um, the, the, I do know that the drummers that play and the musicians that have played with him, and Dweezil has a thing now that he does um, the Frank Zappa thing or whatever. Um, it's incredible, but it's a little too much math for this dumber. Mm -hmm. If you are out of drummer and you're just dumber. Zap Zap is an acquired taste, so I fully understand that. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's kind of odd and on his own little thing. So, do you listen to any like heavier music? Like, do you listen to any metal, or is it just big band stuff? No, no, I do. I mean, it's just it, if it comes across my plate, um, I, I do. You know, it's funny. It's like sometimes you do. You know, you do so much music. I find myself listening to like talk radio on the way home just to clear your head out. It sounds weird, but yeah, no, there's some great, there's some great stuff. It's just some of the stuff I don't understand. And, and uh, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a song guy. I mean, I like, I like, I like drummers that play songs and have backbeat and, um, and what they don't play in a song. It's, it's, you know, it's uh, versus some, some drummers are, um, are, uh, it's like a, it's like a so much going on that I just don't, it just doesn't resonate with me. And I, that's a cool thing about music or art or whatever. It's what is it, what resonates with you, and and mm -hmm. what can you pull from inspiration wise and and whatever. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I did work with like Ved Sevenfold on a few records, and I and I kind of it was I really liked Jimmy, the original drummers, uh, before he passed away. I really enjoyed his playing to that stuff mm -hmm. and. And I was a little bit involved because I was obviously there on the session. So I, it was great to hear all of that stuff 
on the radio, you know, whatever, whatever was played, but, um, he was a really um, good but, drummer. You know, you know I, I'm really kind of getting into system of the down now. I never really, um, liked them in the beginning, but I've, I've heard some stuff and I, 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 I just did some stuff with them in the studio. So it was sort of, um, I got to work with them and I got to see them in a different light. So I'm listening to them in a different light and, um, and they're all neighbors. They all live here in, in Glendale. So are, you said you're working on studio stuff. Are they doing solo shit or are they actually doing an album? Oh, well, they're, uh, they're just probably just pre to a record or whatever, pre, uh, pre, pre, whatever. This is a while ago. Who knows? You know, I mean, I mean, this is heard, a while ago. Been, I'm just saying. I've heard What's they've that? been in. I've heard they've been in the studio. Then there, you can't get along and all that shit. So oh well, no, yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, you know, it's funny. Is like whoever I work with, it's so funny. Drums are usually the first thing done, and usually you finish them in a week, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have to do another two months of recording, and that's when all the weird <laughs> shit starts happening. So I'm kind of in and I'm out. I mean, with any band I've ever worked with, it's I kind of get in there and I'm sort of like the easy button and everything's all great and, and, and cheery and, and like, let's record this. And then, um, and then I hear, Oh my God, so-and-so left the session and blah, blah, blah. So-and-so is not going to sing or blah, blah, blah. so, uh, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I, uh, I, you know, it's just good music's good music and it's just how it, how it relates to you. Heavy jazz, soft acoustic, whatever. I'm super into this, uh, this girl named Sophie, she's from, from France and she does these little Instagram lives on, uh, on, uh, Sundays. And, um, and I just pop on and she plays her guitar and she sings these, some songs in French, some songs in English, sort of bossa novas. And, um, 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 sorry. Uh, and, and it's just uh, cool. We, 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 every, everybody in the chat right now, uh, not to interrupt, but everybody's asking about your tattoos. So do you have a favorite tattoo? Um, I have a least favorite tattoo. I don't know. I think this is my favorite tattoo. This, this is, is my like... favorite too. This is twos in England. Um, Kath and any of the English people know twos is like, if you're, if you and I are hanging out, Mike, mm -hmm. and I learned this from my English crew in uh, Tiger Army tour, and you had a bag of chips or a, a, a bag of candy. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have a bag of chips and a bag of candy. And I said to you, Tooth, you would have to share with me. Oh, I'll have to use that for now. So, Tooth. <laughs> How do you like that, English? What's what was that? the other tattoo that you're showing? What's that? This? Yeah. This is the Japanese symbol of enlightenment right here. And these are, these are supposed to be cherry blossoms, but they faded. This is a chrysanthemum. Moment. This was all done by Kevin Quinn. There's uh, fire, uh, wind, all elements of life. I've had this for so long now, probably 20 years. This was my first tattoo, and it's always your worst tattoo. This girl, I call her uh -huh. Virginia Plain. Um, this girl was supposed to be this big, like just this big. Uh -huh. And it was the first thing on my arm. And I said, oh, no, it's, it's no, just make it bigger. He's like, are you sure? I didn't know about putting other shit around it. So it's the first tattoo is the worst tattoo. Anyways. So, you, so for a while, you just had this big woman on your arm? Yes. It was fucking <laughs> bad. But I got this good kitty. Hey, good kitty. Oh. This is Black Pussy. AKA your kitty. <laughs> Hi, Black Pussy. D don't show us. <laughs> good kitty. Hey, good kitty. Oh, It's a cute kitty. Anyways. So if we go too long, we won't be able to do a part two. So we should okay. wrap it up, wrap it up here shortly. It was nice talking to you, Mike. Oh um, man, if you thanks want... for having me on your show. I appreciate it. It was fun. It was of great course. to uh, meet Tony too and stuff like that and uh, tell stories. If you guys want to follow Mike Fasano on social media, you can find him on Facebook at the Mike Fasano or Instagram at Mike Fasano. Or you can visit Tiger Army's website at www.tigerarmy.com. Next time, we need to talk a little more about the Tiger Army. We talked about everything. Yeah, yeah but... for sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. We'll, we'll do it again. And you're going to be over there kissing your pussy. So, <laughs> yeah. look, at how, look at She's such a good kitty. She's so cute. Kitty. You want to see it? I can't do it. I'll hurt her if I try to do it. <laughs> you want to see? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's for another yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, right. Mike. One more time. Thanks for and, having me, and I'll see no you problem. soon. And um, hey, thanks for everybody um, who watched and uh, sent in questions. And and I'm mm -hmm. sorry uh, if I didn't answer. I love you guys. Uh, just hit me up on the inbox. Instagram, I'll hit you back. And make sure that you uh, subscribe and you hit the notification bell for more episodes. And we'll have the sack back. Uh, All thank right. you, Mike. <laughs> thank you, Mike. You're thank welcome. You Thanks, guys. Thank everybody for See tuning in. See you later. In. Remember, live long, 